Today, despite my sick voice, we are going to chat about capitalism, and I'm going to just try to clear up a few misnomers about it. Now, now I'm going to say right off the bat that words are whatever we want them to be. So I don't lay claim to any particular word. There's, there's common usage. There's a dictionary definition, but dictionary, that's just one person who wrote something down based on their worldview at that moment in time. So that's not going to solve anything. So you're welcome to call things whatever you want. And so am I, but I'm going to talk about what kind of the traditional, normal, accepted use of a word is, and uh, uh, kind of where I'm going to take it, my understanding of it. Now, if you want to say that capitalism means to you a frog sliding down a yellow children's slide, and that's what capitalism, that was that, that's what the word means to you, you may do so, but I, I'm looking at it from a little bit more serious, historical, traditional, this is, this is what it technically means. So there is no excuse for capitalism that is needed. And, and the reason that this is true, uh, in, in my opinion, my worldview, is that capitalism simply means that the means of production are private. And, and so to break this down, the means of production, this is an economics term. And so what is what are the means of production? Well, what do you need to produce something of value? And, and let's just take a, an arrow. We'll make a real basic old fashioned example here. If you wanted to make an arrow to shoot with your bow, you would need to have some raw resources. You would need to have a stick, a, a straight stick, hopefully. And you need to maybe have some feathers for the end of it, maybe some glue or some sort of a sinewy something to tie the, is it called the fletching or something? The arrows that the, the, the thing that makes them spin. Uh, you need something to tie that on. Then you'd need maybe an arrowhead for the end of it. Um, you might need a, a little bit of a machine uh, to help lathe the stick so that it's spinning really fast and, and you can hone it so that it's perfectly straight. Well, all of those things I just described are means of production. The stick is part of your capital. The machine to make the stick straighter is part of your capital. The money that you would use to purchase the machine, if you didn't have it yet, that would be part of your capital. Your, uh, your feathers, all of those things are part of your capital. That's what makes up your capital that is going to produce this thing, the arrow, that, that has value. And so the difference between capitalism and other systems is that there are other systems that say that those means of production should not be owned privately by individuals or groups of individuals, but rather by a government entity, the state, the, the people who run the collective, who run the, the masses of people, the, the masters, the ruling class should be the ones who own those means of production. So when we hear the word capitalism, it is tempting to think of, of what the, the, the cathedral, they call it, the media and the, the big schools and such, what, what they've tried to color it to be the last 10 or 20 or 30 years or whatever. And so we think of Bernie Madoff. That's a capitalist. That's the bad guy. Um, or even over 100 years ago, the the big fat guy with suspenders and a cigar hanging out that's lighting his cigar with hundred dollar bills and and hates the people who who work and, and so there's kind of that i don't know there's that misnomer that that's what capitalism is and yes some capitalists smoke cigars and some capitalists don't appreciate their hardworking employees some capitalists like apples some capitalists don't like apples there are a lot of different things that can fall within being a capitalist, but the true sense of the word is means of production are privately owned. And I happen to think that that's a wonderful idea. I don't want the, the party, the, the ruling class, the, the party president to own all of these means of production, because then it's not going to be run as well as if it's privately owned. Now, part of capitalism is the opportunity, uh, which is a strange word to use for this, but let's use it, the opportunity to fail and the opportunity to make mistakes. 
So if I am making my arrows and they're not really all that straight and I'm asking a million dollars each for them and you're making arrows and they're perfectly straight and they fly beautifully and you're only asking $10 for them, then my capitalist enterprise will likely fail. In a free market situation, mine will fail. Yours probably won't. Yours will do really well and you'll grow and you'll grow until someone else says, hey, wait, this person's making 10 bucks an arrow. I think I can make one that's even better for $9 or $8. And so then that person would think, well, where can I cut some costs and still keep the quality up? That's how you end up having the many wonderful things we have today that for, are just unbelievable that really that's all it costs. I can have a, a, a computer for only a thousand bucks. It's a, a pretty good one. That's crazy wonderful. Well, that's competition within a capitalist uh, environment. That's what happens. So I am a big proponent of capitalism, and I am frustrated when I hear people disparaging it and using things that have nothing to do with it. Now, there's crony capitalism. Have you heard of this? This is where, then I'm going to use Halliburton as an example. So and you think about anything in the in, uh, military industrial complex, if, if there's a war that people are able to get started, then there are certain companies that are really going to gain from that. And then those companies try to get people into the government positions so that they can help keep the wars going, start them, keep them going. And then those companies get big contracts to build the bombs and to provide the post-traumatic stress syndrome counseling afterward, because uh, they're making good money on that counseling, those counseling services for the, the troops that are sent over and come back with their, their heads all messed up and sad and having done some horrible things that they feel guilty about. And so there's lots of big counseling industry there that, that they're making good money. And then we, we're tempted to say, well, that's capitalism. Well, no, that's crony capitalism. We're using our favors. We're, we're getting involved with the state, the government, in order to get this business to happen. That has nothing to do with capitalism. It, it's, it's Any system does that. So capitalism can't be blamed for crony capitalism. It's just one little subsection of capitalism. And uh, yeah, I'm opposed to crony capitalism. I think we should all go out there and work hard. We shouldn't get favors from our government buddies so that we can get ahead. Um, we should go out and work really hard and try to produce a better service at a, at a lower price. And that's how we get ahead, or at a fair price at least. And sometimes if you're the only person that has a thing, then you can charge a lot more. And that's the great thing about capitalism is there are certain times that you can charge $20 for a bottle of water and right after a hurricane somewhere and everybody is desperate. You can charge $20 per bottle of water. And then all of a sudden, somebody's going, wow, we can make that much money. I'm going to take some water down to this hurricane area. And then they will sell it for 15 bucks. And then somebody else will come down and sell it for 10. And then before you know it, things are back down much closer to market rates. Usually they get down to market rates about the same time as the government trucks come rolling in to save everybody with free water, which was purchased with money stolen from people through taxes. So I, I'm kind of rambling here, but, but I'm just so passionate about capitalism, true, pure, free market capitalism. And, and I hope that I haven't uh, missed anything here, but I'm sure I've missed a lot. Please do ask questions below if I haven't clarified. And uh, I would love to make future videos and, and clarify the areas that I was incorrect about or that I just left something out. And uh, yeah, I, I encourage you to really investigate capitalism and how wonderful it is.